Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Vortex campaign, where we are of course playing as Clan Pestilence. Now before I get started with today's episode, there's just two quick things to talk about. Firstly, I'm recording this while also expecting a package to turn up at some point, so if the video cuts abruptly, that's why. Hopefully though they turn up while I'm fighting a battle or something like that, so I don't have to worry about doing it in the post-edit, but we'll see what happens. The second thing then is that, as you may know here in the UK, our lockdown restrictions have beginning to lift. And I've actually got some friends coming down to visit tomorrow and stay in a few days. And I haven't seen them for about a year and a bit now, given all the lockdowns and everything. So I'm not going to have the time to actually record any footage for episodes later this week. What I'm going to do is record straight after this one is uploaded, as well as record another one for the Musi Long campaign. So there will still be episodes coming out on Friday and Saturday. It just means that I won't have the time to react to any comments that you guys leave in this video or the next Musi Long one. And I'll talk about it in the Musi Long campaign as well, just so for those of you that may watch. Well, if you're not watching this one, but you're watching that one, you're not going to get this anyway. You guys know what I'm talking about anyway. So, with that said, let's get on with today's episode, where if you remember last time, we've really taken the fight to lock here Felhart and his armies, conquering their capital over here at Chuapayoto, if or however you pronounce it. So today, I want to finish off a lock here. Now, he's only got a few territories left, so we're going to be focusing on going after these with both Mormel and Babawats, because... As was widely pointed out in the comments of the last episode, while we've got a lock here on the ropes, we don't want to start easing things on him and allowing him to fight back, especially since we know that Malice Darkblade is somewhere down in this section of the world as well. So, let's grab who we got here, Normel. Now, if we, let's get you back to normal stance first of all. And we're actually within range of the Southern Sentinels. Okay. You haven't got as much of a range. I wonder if this is because his extra range is because of Ekech here. I believe he gives increased mobility, does he not? Well, it doesn't matter. What we're going to do is attack using more mail. Ooh, Chaos Army. Right. So we'll come and deal then. We'll bring down Bubba Rats if we need the reinforcements. Yeah, I think we do. So let's hold on to you a minute. And... Let's see, how do we want to do this? Do we want to use the underway to get in a position or just force march? I suppose we can use the underway. Let's just pop right here, sure. And then we'll get back onto more mail. That's the attack. There we go. Goodbye. There we go, just signs of victory. Right. What do we want to do with this? We're going to first of all sack it, of course. There we go, that's going to give us a nice bit of money. Alright, click for all of these. It's now a Dark Elf Bane for Baboat. Cool. Looter for Mormel, okay. And then we'll grab you, attack again. Now, Southern Sentinels is just a minor settlement, but I'm going to go and use some of our food to get up to level 2, just so we can build some basic defenses while we're here. So, let's get that built up straight away. We'll keep the rubbish pit for money. We can actually go and upgrade here. We'll do that straight away. Sure, why not? And let's go for public order for the moment. Okay, and then what we'll do then, we'll bring the armies down towards here so we can go after Slanzek. We'll take out the rebels on the way, but the, once we've dealt with these, we can just push through to the Citadel of Dusk, the tip of Lustria, and I think that might be all of their territory. Yeah, they've only got the three left. I wonder. Nah, they're not going to be willing to vassalize me. That's a shame. Right, so that's you guys moved. Cyprus. Oh yeah, that's right. We were waiting for an opportunity to try and bring him down to give Skrulk these new units. But unfortunately, we're under siege, I believe, from... Is it this army here? Or is it this one here? Well, we could actually just attack him. You know what? Sure. There we go. That was easy. 
Right, we'll go ahead and, I suppose, take the extra replenishment. Picked a warrior bane as well for sea press. Cool. Alright, so now that's dealt with, he'll get his replenishment back in plenty of time. And then we'll grab Lord Squawk and use the underway. Let's pop you over here. And the next turn they should be able to meet up then. Okay, so that's you. Plague Rock, what can I do with you? I think we've already done Hualotto, haven't we? Search the wounds? Yeah. Uh, oh, I know what we can do. Is he still... Yeah, here he is. This could be a bit ambitious, but I don't think we can go after Croak. 34%. He's got 8% chance of being wounded. Sure. I mean, that would be a big thing for his reputation if he can take down Lord Croak, even temporarily. I think that should be everyone. Yeah, Garrett. To be honest, I'm going to get rid of Garrett. Simply because it costs me 363 upkeep a turn. So I'll get rid of you. And hopefully that will trickle down in a minute. And uh, let's have a quick look. Is there anything else we want to upgrade? Buy? Anything like that? Definitely want to try and upgrade Oxo at some point. We could go ahead to get an Arsenal. Oh, I'll tell you what, actually. Up in Itza. Oh, we actually got a siege happening up here, haven't we? Hmm. Do you think it might be worth actually just fighting this? Let's have a look. Balance bar is about 50-50. But looking at what they've got, they've just got a bunch of clan rats and a bunch of sl slingers. We've got everything from poison ring globe it is to rat ogres, storm vermin. You know what? Let's fight this battle. I'm going to get a few more uses of the Menace below, just in case. And, uh, yeah. May the best rat win. Well then, guys. Here we are outside the city of Itza, as the garrison have marched forth to attack the Skaven army laying siege to the walls. Now, I say that, but uh, we're not very close to Itza in the slightest, if we look up. But the reason I wanted to slow things down a little bit, apart from just pointing that out, is to showcase really how beautiful the map is we're fighting on for this battle. I mean, you can see all the pyramid complexes in the far distance. But the thing that really caught my attention was the waterfall right behind us. That just looked really, really cool when I was fighting, and for it was such a nice scene. Although, it's kind of, well, dirtied when you consider that we're playing with Skaven, fighting other Skaven. But, hey-ho, one of those things. <laughs> anyway, the enemy have started their position, if I move over here slightly, basically all set up along here. In fact, let me bring that up. They stretched out all the way across here, but because of the positioning, they can only come up either this section here or this section here. Now, I've put my rat ogres on the left flank just to see about either dealing with any enemies trying to make their way up, and also to try and outflank them if possible. And to help them out a bit, hiding in the trees over here, we do have our units of gutter runners using their poison. Show again at just in case. But for the most part, our main garrison units are over here. Now what I've done is start setting up units like the sensor bearers, the storm vermin and that, to make a nice defensive line across here. Behind them then we've got the poison wing globe it is. And we've got the slaves rushing forward because we have access to that one ability that allows us to blow up a unit if it gets below half health. So I sent the Skaven slaves straight in in order to try and go after this big clump of enemies right here. Now because of the number of Skaven slave slingers that they happen to have, it meant that a number of them you can see started actually moving away but were able to catch up with a few of them and hold them in place for our Plague Claw catapults to fire, which is quite cool. Unfortunately, the slaves actually didn't last too long, and I was like, crap, that plan didn't work. And as you can see, if I slow things down just a little bit more again, you can see they've still got a lot of health to them, so that was completely useless. So what I ended up doing instead is actually summoning a unit of clan rats in order to try and get right in the middle of the horde here. Figuring that if we can bunch a whole group of them together, that should make things nice and easy for us to blow up afterwards. You can see in the distance as well, the enemy's master assassin. I can't remember the guy's name, but, uh, well, he just got shot up by the clan post, didn't he? Barely touched him. I will point that out. But he's busy firing away. 
But while this is going on over here, we're now about to get a nice big juicy explosion. Boom! Just look at that cloud of blood and all the bodies on the floor. With the play claws coming in to help as well, of course. Now if I just jump over here a second, you can see what was going on. They did send two units to come and try and flank us, but my Wack Ogres made short work of them. And because of that, I started bringing in the Gutter Runners, who started firing into the position, as you can see, with their Shurikens. But their job now is to try and basically run around to the back to outflank the enemy position. And with that, I'm going to be sending you know, Rat Ogres to help as well. Now, over this side, unfortunately, because I went over to that side, we actually missed out a large part of the battle, which, to be fair, is very, very short. I mean, the enemy have just got clan rats, and when they're facing storm vermin and plague rats and that, it's um, very one-sided, to say the least. But I end up doing stuff like using our ability to get a few more kills in. I use the clan rats here just to try and pin some more enemies in place, make sure they're not going to run away anytime soon. The poison and globideers have really been racking up the body count, especially like this central unit here. But I have had to be careful because if I head back over here, you can see that some of my units have taken quite a bit of friendly fire. They've killed a lot, but they've also taken some friendly fire from the globes. Now that's fine though, because at this point, the victory is basically mine. We're chasing down all the enemy Skaven Slave Slingers. The only unit really at this point that isn't running away is this unit of Clan Rats, which is about to, and their Master Assassin. Everybody, oh, actually, I tell a lie, there's a unit of Storm Vermin here too. Sorry, Storm uh, Clan Rats. But at this point, I bring in my Storm Vermin to attack them in the rear. And what I did with all these enemies running over here was that I summoned in a unit of Clan Rats, as you can see here. Just to try and hold a few of them in place, can hopefully kill off a few as they try to make their way past. And we've got my Plague Monks running up behind them just to slaughter a few more. Now it's at this point that we won the battle. You can see Barnes Bar is completely in our favour. It took a few kills, or, well a few casualties I should say, but we managed to win that fight quite easily. So what I'm doing basically at this point is just trying to chase down as much of the enemy as I can. Unfortunately, thanks to Skaven being very fast when they're running away, and my troops not being as fast on account of them being nice and but huddled up together and secure in their numbers, it means that a lot of the enemy managed to get away without me catching up. But we shall see them again in the future, don't you worry. Anyway guys, let's go back to the campaign map, shall we? So there we go guys, a nice easy victory for us. Now, that's going to lift up the siege in Itza, which means we can actually start developing it a bit more. And I think I'm going to go ahead and eat the captives, get our replenishment back up for the garrison. Just in case we have to fight any more. Because while we've dealt with that one, I can spot the <laughs> Dahar here with the Warhead Rebels. If they end up trying to lay siege to it, at least we've got a good garrison ready to defend the walls. So... That should give us the opportunity now as well to develop things. So let's see what we got. Let's go ahead and get us a bit more cash. Do I want to do that? No, 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 no. I know what I want to get. Finally get around to building the Emerald Pools here. After all of this time, we can finally do it. Now, is there anything else I can... Right, Dust Gates. Let's grab you that. And we'll grab that while we're here as well. That's all good. I think that's everything for now. Right, we've got this to deal with. Crap. Hmm. I think we might have to deal with that in a minute. For the moment, let's upgrade. So, Bubba Rats. Let's give you a wound maker. And then... Oh, no, 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 no. Something that was pointed out that would be very, very good, especially if we want to make another army, is to try and give all our characters Quartermaster and Renowned and Feared for the upkeep reduction. So let's grab Quartermaster for a 3%. It's not a lot, but it all add up over time. Slice in. Let's give you Expeditious Endeavors, just to increase your speed a bit. More Mel. Oh, I'm so looking forward to being able to get these done, but we've got a little way longer to go. Right, let's give you... you've already got Quartermaster. Let's give you Renowned and Feared then. Wow, look at that. Minus 89. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. Alright. 
Okay, we're going quite thin. Let's give you... Let's finish off Death Frenzy. And then what I'm actually thinking is maybe work on the battle skills just so we can increase the power and strength behind our rat ogres, our other monsters, our weapon teams and so on. That could be useful. But next level up, we'll also get this as well. And start working our way down here. That might be better. So we'll grab that for now though. Ickbolts, let's give you Blade Shield, just to make you a little bit tougher in combat. Ekich, we can give you Triangulation, increasing missile strength. And I think we'll go for Arms Deal, just to increase our munition a bit. Vortex Ritual, not worried about. Let's hit Enter. Huh. Thank you, Servants to Chaos Warband, that decided to come and kill the rebels for me. How very nice of you. <laughs> I love it when the AI just ends up pulling up stuff like that. Oh, Ickstone, you made a great mistake, my friend. Let's order resolve that. Nice, easy fight. And it looks like they may come back from round two in eventually. And for now, let's get some more... Oh, excuse me, hiccups. Let's get some more food. And look at that, we're actually now in the positive for income. We haven't had that for a while. Oh, and another battle. Okay. So this is Dahar, though, wait a sec. Why is he able to attack us? I mean, he hasn't got it. Hang on, let me show a quick look. Yeah, he hasn't got anything here that suggests... Allowing him to do siege attacks. You know, so he's not able to do, like, siege attack like Vlad von Garstein. And none of the units that he's got here should allow him to attack straight away. Oh well. We'll fight the battle anyway. Luckily, we should have the walls on our side. So the garrison held off the Skaven quite well. So I think we should be able to pull this off fairly easy too. So, let's get our hands on a bit more menace below. And fight this battle as well. Well then guys, here we are in the Undercity of Itza, where I admit I actually made a mistake in the first episode talking about us taking the garrison outside the city and not spotting the city on the map. Makes complete sense when you consider our city is underground. <laughs> anyway, to start things off, you can see the beastmen in front of us have no option but to basically charge straight towards the walls to try and climb them. What I've got the towers doing in the meantime is actually going after the unit of harpies, just because I do find these a slight irritation when it comes to fighting siege battles, because of the fact they can just fly and attack where needed. So the towers are focusing on those. Everybody else is just rushing down here, as you can see. We've got the poisoning globideers getting quite a few kills on these unit of ungors, but that's going to keep them busy for a little while anyway. Now over this side, you can see I've charged down some clan rats from the menace below, coming out from the walls themselves. Although we can just pretend they're coming out through the tunnels here. Now you can guess why I've brought these guys out. So for the moment they're keeping the beast gores and the gore units busy. But while they're doing that, the beast lord bravely comes up to attack my plague monks one on one. Maybe not the best idea for him, but that's what he's decided to do. Now, while he's doing that, the Harpies now charge in, as you can see, but luckily we've killed so many of them that they're not going to stick around the fight for too long. And already, we're about to get the magical moments. Right. Boo! <laughs> now, we do get the news over here that not only does that unit retreat, but we will be seeing another one in a minute because... Actually, I'll point them out over here. I didn't realize this happened initially, but for some reason the gates opened and like I said, I don't know why. The gate damage was quite low, none of my units was marching out, but it did mean then that with the Ungor Spearmen actually moving away, you could see the Plague Claws just shooting right through the gates and getting a few good hits in like this. Now I did realize these guys were battering it down at this point and while I didn't get far, I decided to bring the Rat Ogres out, and while the Razorgore Chariots have tried their best to hold the line, you can see over here, one of my raddies just go into town on this chariot, and it's not going to be a good day for these guys. Not in the slightest. 
Now while that's going on, we've at this point now started summoning my you know, chariot clan lads, but it didn't last too long with all the extra units over here. But it's going to go very much in our favour very, very quickly. If I show you off on this side, for example, Fangs was killing all those gores and beast of gores. They're already about to run away the gores anyway. And over here, the, well, the gores and the ungores, they're just not going to be capable of taking on the plague monks as well as the storm vermin I've rushed up to try and support the attack. The sensor bearers, I must admit, they're just having a fun time going up against the beast of gores. Watch them. As they come up, they may take a swing, and then next minute they sing and a flying mace or sensor right into the beast of gores' heads, sending them down, and very quickly they start out in shattered in fact. So these guys are going to try and make their way off the battlefield. Everybody at this point is one in a way. I've got the towers and the play claw catapults just chasing down and shooting down the units one in a way. My ogres are also chasing after the enemies just because they're fast and I figure they might want some fun. I have to admit though I was impressed if I go back onto this section here where despite the overwhelming numbers that he's facing the Beast Lord is still fighting strong. I mean, you can't, it's hard to get his flag considering there's a couple of gores still hanging around. But he did okay. He was heavily outnumbered and he's trying his best to fight. But yeah, very, very impressed with him. Now, he's going to survive this battle. I decided very quickly that if I'm going to have to deal with this army in the future, it's better for them to have a weak commander who I can kill off very quickly and get that morale debuff rather than, you know, having a fresh commander of full strength. But as you can see, looking around, we've managed to get a lot, a lot of kills in already from the enemies running away. So very soon, I just figured, you know what? He's got a low enough health number I'm happy with. Everyone else has now run off the map. I'm not just going to sit there and wait. So we will finish the battle any minute with a close victory. Now personally, given how few casualties we took, I really didn't agree with that. I mean, I can spot a couple units here and there that had low health, but generally we didn't lose a lot of full units, especially compared to the enemy. But it's how the game works sometimes. So... Let's go back to the campaign map. So there we have it. A supposedly close victory. But looking at the numbers involved, I'm well, I like to argue that. But the most important thing is we managed to get a bit of extra loot from it, which is never a bad thing. What do we want to do? This time I'm gonna sell off the captives. It was tempting to get that bit of replenishment, but we will get some back anyway, just on account of this being the end turn phase. So, when the game makes up its mind, what are you guys doing? Wait, you, you guys are... Since when are Skaven Druki Rebels? <laughs> ah, game. Right, let's, let's bring up here a second. Turtle Isles, I am the law. Wait and wait and wait and wait, 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 wait and wait. Let's kill off the last of Toxide's forces. This should be a pretty easy fight. Oh yeah, definitely. Goodbye. Right. Let's have a look. Might as well just grab some extra food, I think. We're not going to get much out of it otherwise. So there we go. That's it's now secured. We're actually in the green now. Not by much, but we are there. That's something, eh? Alright, let's go grab more mail. Let's have a look. What I'm tempted to do is we've got a few stacks here. Goscovissa, Kuhn, and Najua. I would like both Babarat and Mormel to go in, but I also would like to try and get rid of these rebels, first of all. So let's actually send Mormel down, first of all. We'll go after these rebels, kill them off, and then we can see what we can do then about the Druki. So let's see, 418. 22% casualty replenishment, I'll take that. Alright, let's have a look. You're one off here. Let's go and kill him off and finish him off. There we go, that was easy. Alright, so again, take some more food this time, I think. Slowly getting up towards the mega green, bountiful food. Sorry, plentiful food. Right, cool. Alright, so that's you done. Let's... I wonder, 
What's our chances of setting up an ambush? And only 55% with you, but what about you? You should be a hundred. Right, what we're gonna do is see maybe if we can set up attempting targets. So we'll put you here near kayaks. I'll leave you as you are. Oh, let's bring a bubble rat down. To act as an amb oh damn it! <laughs> I forgot to move him out it from the underway stance. Bugger. Okay, slight change of plan. And let's see if we can get more Mel to do an ambush. Nope, he's just out of range. Damn it. It's okay. It's okay. I'm not I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. <laughs> right, let's get Cepheus over here now. And we'll grab a you, Skulk. Right. So what do I want to actually swap out? I'll swap out, I think, the triads. Because we can give our hands now to some Storm Vermin. Do I want to swap out Vermic Spears for these? Oof. That is tempting. You know what? Sure. Vermic Spears can go. We'll replace them with the Plague Monk Sensor Bearers and the Scourge Sentinels. Whatever they might be. Alright, that's that. So, Cepheus, we're gonna go ahead and then actually just disband the entire army. And just like that now, we've got three and a half thousand tokens a turn. Oh, that is fantastic. Right, Plague Rock. Um... You can assault units. I'm tempted to actually send you over here temporarily. 71%. How's it looking over here anyway? Not ideal given all these rat ogres. But if they can hold on for another turn, then hopefully Plagwok will be able to do enough casualties to them to make the battle more in our favour. So yeah, we'll leave you to do that. Bubblat is fine then where he is. Mormel is there. Skulk's fine. Okay. Is there any pl other places we need to upgrade? Okay, Karen's off the bat. We've got the walls there. We'll upgrade this. Basically, we're just going to go around and upgrade anything that can give us a little bit of extra cash. So, we'll grab that. Oh, actually. That's fine. Okay, Ulta. Let's upgrade this. And let's get our hands on this. And upgrade that as well. There we go. Perfect. Imminent Rebellion at the Turtle Isles. Not surprising, I guess. Ekitch. Right, let's give you two points then in Arms Dealer to increase ammunition. Then we're going to go for Ballistics. Oh, hang on, actually. Hang on. What do we have here? Doom Rocket. Ballistics Instructor for extra range. Sapper for extra speed for all missile units. An Overseer for leadership size. And what's this one? Affects enemy allies in range. Constant as long as he's within thing. Increases armor pierce and explosive damage. Ooh. Oh, those are so good. And we'll go here. Crash, cool, flint, and... Okay, let's get Ballistics Calibration. This way then it can... Is it a constant ability? No, it's 90 seconds away. We'll grab that for the bonus for accuracy and reload. We'll grab a Doom Rocket, just because that must be useful to get at some point. We'll get Ballistics Instructor as well. We'll come back in and get Arms Dealer and Overseer and things like that. So that's you. Vortex will leave. Ickbolt. Oh, we can give you these now. Bread Leader, increasing his aura leadership effect. Paranoid Defender gives him the Vermi Verminious Valor. Or Suspiciously Loyal. Increasing leadership for the entire army and giving the... Well, give more male ward save. Sure, let's grab Suspiciously Loyal. A lock is she knee. Oh, well, hang on. We can give you Immortality. That was an easy choice. <laughs> right. Is that everybody? Why? Who's here that needs upgrading? More mail. Why, right, thanks, game, for telling me that. Let's give you a specimen collector. We get these now at level 13. Right. Power overload? 
Cooldown reduction will be useful, but we haven't got a lot of spells that we're currently using. Let's go ahead with Inspiring Presence. Oh no, hang on. I keep doing this, don't I? Oh no, we've already done that. My bad. Um, yeah, sorry. Specimen Collector, Inspiring Presence. There we go. Oh, hello. Lock here has come to attack us. Okay, so he's attacking Mormel's army. Dance bar is actually with it in our favor. Oh, wow. Oh, hang on. Oh, damn. I was hoping we could bring in Bubble Rat's reinforcements, but apparently not. Ooh. Let's give this to you guys. You know what? Sure. Let's fight this battle as well. We're going to use the maximum uses of the menace below just in case. But, yeah. I'm interested to see how this battle will go. Lockyer is obviously going to be a pain to deal with. But, given everything else we've got, we might actually do relatively okay. Let's fight the battle. See how we do. Well, here we are, guys, as we prepare to take on Lockyer Felhart and his army using our monster army from Clan Mulder. Now, you can see the enemy in the distance are making their way towards us, but so I start setting up my troops ready to face them and deal with the Dark Elves. Now, the Lightning Cannons and Plague Lord Catapults are ready getting some early shots in against these units up in front. We're getting a few kills in, which is quite nice to see. But as we're getting a bit closer, we're going to have to be a little careful ourselves. I didn't notice for a little while, in fact, but you can see in the tree line over here, firing away now, the repeater bolt throwers. So I figured we've got a good unit we can actually send to deal with that. And that model turns out to be the terror below. <laughs> so I brought him into position to go after the reaper bolt throwers, but didn't expect the enemy to bring in so many troops to try and deal with them. So we've got some dark shards coming in over here, the bleak swords are coming in as well. So he managed to kite a couple of units at least. Now, as you can see, as the enemy got closer, we've started to really open up with them with our overwhelming firepower. Which, don't forget, thanks to our Warlock Engineer, is actually getting a deep buff to the damage. So already, we're getting a ton of casualties going across the board right here. Let's slow things down a minute. You can see the lightning from the Warp Lightning Cannons are trying to hit Lockyer. We managed to get a few good solid hits in. And what I've done at this particular moment is I've got, where is he, Mormel, basically trying to sprint over here to use his spell. I can't remember what it's called. It's called like Howling Gale or something like that. But it's basically going to pin Lock here in place so we can actually use the opportunity to fire him a little more. Now, I think he's about to start firing his Pestilent Breath, but that's fine. We don't have to worry about that. Instead, we can watch the pretty fireworks. As the, was it, the Death Globe Bombardiers start firing away and let's look at it. So, so pretty. <laughs> While that's going on though, we've got our Giselles firing away at the enemy's Sisters of Slaughter over here, in fact. Managed to do quite a lot of damage to them, getting them to run away without taking a single, well, inflicting a single gang shot here, I should say. And over in the distance, you can see the second Reaper Bolt team has been chased away by a unit of clan rats who have summoned in with a menace below. Now, despite all of this firepower, it's still not quite enough to stop the elves from getting close to our lions. Especially it's like places over here. You can see some of the Corsairs getting very, very close to Vatican's shooters. So at this point, I start charging out my troops. Clan Molder's best can just swing in it. And while these guys are doing a fantastic job against the Corsairs and everybody else, they don't do so well against these sisters. Although a bit of warp lightning does help a great deal. Now, fortunately for me, the enemy have started using now um, what's it called, murderous, murderous prowess. So they're going to get a nice buff to their combat abilities, but it's not going to last too long. You can see Lock here over here, in particular, if I slow things down just a little bit more. We've got both Slasher Thing and Slayer Thing attacking him in combat, and he has been supported by some Black Ark Corsairs. But we're still taking some shots in against Lockyer. We've managed to get one unit at least to run away. In fact, who is the unit? Oh, Dark Shots. Gotcha. As that's going on though, we've managed to basically break through the enemy's line with a lot of our troops. I've actually over here, I'm trying to remember which one I did it on. Here. 
I cast my first use of Death Frenzy. So you can see that it increases our units of armored rat ogres quite significantly. 24 melee attack, extra 30% weapon damage, and makes them immune to psychology. Very, very useful. Now it is unfortunately cast on the, diff the wrong unit, because I actually had a unit of ogres, I think it might be this one. That actually, is either this one or, no, it's this one down here. Right, the fifth unit. You can see they're losing, and it's mainly just down to the Sisters of Slaughter rushing away with their whips. And it's actually enough to get these to retreat. And I think it's the first time I've had a unit from this army retreat. It was really surprising. But they're doing their job holding the enemy in place, as you can see, with firing away with the Giselles. All those different color uh, war bullets just firing down into them, inflicting casualties wherever they can. The Corsairs did get a little close over here, you can see that if I hover over, Vatican's shooters have taken a few casualties because of how close they got. But it's okay, it's one of those things. Anyway, at this point, with a lot of the enemy running away, I started bringing all my armored Vatogas, the best of Clan Mulder, to join in in the fight over here. So, I'm trying to be a bit careful as well with the Death Globe Globideers and the Mormel Special Delivery because I don't want them landing on my own troops and inflicting casualties. But you can see at this point, enough is enough. Lockyer is starting to retreat and the entire enemy army shatters completely. Now it's just a case of trying to chase them down as quickly as we can. Oh, damn hiccups. And one thing I'm making sure to do is use the artillery and ranged units to their full potential, shooting down everything that they can get their bullets into. Now I just wanted to show off what's happened over here with the terror below. As I said, he was fighting a unit of dark shards, some unit of bleak swords, and the bolt throwers by himself initially until I summoned in a unit of clan rats. But he managed to do quite well, 43 kills. And as he gets closer and starts going after all these other ones, he's going to get a few more kills added to his kill count. But victory is mine, and I think we can safely go back to the campaign map once we, well, Enjoy the fireworks a little more. Well, at least that's what I'm going to. See you guys back up on there. So there we go. Decisive victory against Lockyer. Defeated him. Wait a sec. Oh wow, I didn't realise Lockyer didn't actually get a single kill in. He managed to do a fair bit of damage, to be fair. But if I'm up, yeah, he was actually fighting Slasher Thing and Slayer Thing. Which is why they're badly damaged. But between them and all the Rat Ogres that fought, yeah. He didn't get much of a chance. But looking at some of the kills as well for my troops, the Avalanche Mortars, 212. You know, Mormel Special Delivery, 140. Even the Terror Below, again, 66. That's really, really good by these guys. Fantastic job. Now, what do we want to do? We could go away and eat the captives. That way then we can get a lot of replenishment back. Hmm. The thing is, though, there's only a couple of units that actually will benefit from that. Let's, yeah, let's go ahead. No, nah, let's go and just sell them off. We can always chase down Lockyer's army, or the survivors, using Bubba Rat, but or even using Mormel again, just to be able to get uh, some more experience. But we'll get leave it for a minute. <laughs> the Servants to Chaos have done it again. Demo Harbor Laxus has only just gone ahead and killed off Lockyer. And now he's coming after that. I kind of... Oh, he burned it down. Bugger. I'm just saying that because I would have liked to have sacked it and got some extra money myself. But it's okay. It's one of those things. Now, let's see. Caverns of the Great Bats. We've got uh, lots of big uns. Lots of orc boys. And against which we've got everything from Death Globe, Bombardiers, Plague Claws. Let's just all resolve that. Okay, Pyrrhic victory. I'll take that. Let's... I don't know. Eating the captives isn't going to give me much. Let's get some extra money in. Uh, Stone looks like he's coming back for round two. There we go. Another decisive victory. Uh, yeah. Let's eat the captives. Sorry, enslave them, get some extra food. I would have thought it would be actually eating them. That would give you the food, you know? Alright, same here. God, it's been a nice, easy end turn phase, isn't it? Eventful, but easy. 
Oh. Okay, this might be a little tougher then. Right. We'll start the next episode off with this battle. As Seepwicht, a warlock engineer, is going to hold Zotor against Cho Li, who happens to be... Okay, so he's a Saurus old one. Right. Saurus warriors, red-crested skinks, skink cohorts. Really, I think we wouldn't win this fight. But, yeah, we'll just have to fight it ourselves and see how it goes. But, let's end things here for today. Thank you everyone for watching today's episode. Hope you enjoyed, and that you do join me next time, of course, for some more Warhammer. But until then, everybody, take care, stay safe, and goodbye for now.